name is Patty Duran. I'm the president of the Smart Energy Consumer Collaborative, and we are a nonprofit that conducts consumer research around the areas of energy and technology. Hi, I'm Kathy Knoop with Salt River Project. We are a nonprofit public power utility in Phoenix, Arizona, basically in Mesa Chandler in the East Valley. Earlier this year, we conducted a study called Consumer Pulse and Segmentation Study, and we asked questions about electric vehicles this year for the first time. And one of the questions we asked, and this went to the general population, is, are you interested in an electric vehicle? And the answer we received was 16% of the U.S. population is very interested, and another 29% is somewhat interested. So if you add 29 and 16, you come up to 45, which is almost half, and that is a very high number. So the people who don't own an EV right now and are just thinking about it, if we can get to that awareness component and let them know that the utility is in the business of facilitating their adoption of an EV, and then, so I always look at it sort of awareness, education for those people who are thinking about buying it, and then really reiterating our support for those people who have bought it. Our EV customers, we're growing at about 50% a year, and they are clustered. So we do, we, we get some Polk Automotive data where they're at um, and do some heat maps around that. And we can tell they're, they're really structured around the high-tech corridor. So there's a lot of electricity consumption going on there and going on in those neighborhoods. 200 people a day are moving to Maricopa County. I mean, we're, we're seeing unprecedented growth once again. So as new neighborhoods are being built, and now we don't know, as they put an EV in there, is that going to fit on their 200 amp panel? Does it need bigger? And is that 200 amp panel getting filled up right away? And is our neighborhood distribution transformer sized right for that? One of the reasons we did our data logger study is so that we could get load shapes from our EV customers that are on the different price plans. Um, SRP's got three different time of use price plans. And to make the case to management and to our grid planning and performance people that if somebody has an EV and we've educated them that a time of use rate is gonna save them money on charging their car and that to follow that well by setting the timer on your car, setting your timer on your charger, whatever the case may be. And when we tested that out, it was true. They, they followed almost to a T whatever price plan they were on. That was that load shape. That is exactly what that load shape looked like. And now I think we need to educate the people who are going to start putting in, you know, 19.6 kW home chargers with 80 amp circuits, like a lot of the Teslas do. Do they really need to get their charge back in 45 minutes at home? They don't. The findings that we had on alternative rates included um, what, what we call an optimal model, an optimal rate plan that most consumers would enroll in, we found that 62% of residential consumers would enroll in a time of use rate if it had two choices or two tiers because they like to save money. They like to think that the environment is cleaner. They like the idea of technology helping them through automation. I can beat your 62%. Oh, great. <laughs> With uh, our current EV owners, 70% of them are on one of our time of use programs. 30% of them are on our E29, which is our EV super off-peak. What we need to figure out is the people who are on a basic price plan, how are we going to get them to treat their electric vehicle differently? What's really worked well for us is that EV community. And collecting the data, knowing who your customers are, um, aside from using disaggregation tools to identify those customers, which is a really great idea as well, um, we tend to use the propensity modeling um, and find those likely customers to, to talk to them about um, the right time of use plans. But the EV community, getting people to voluntarily tell you what they have, how they charge at home when they bought their car, has been a godsend because now we have these people who said, yes, you can reach out to me for research programs, and yes, you can reach out to me with offers, and yes, you can reach, I want to hear more about what SRP has to offer. That pulls them back as our customer, not the automaker's customer or the charging company's customer, but it, it reiterates that SRP is there for them and they are our customer when it comes to electric vehicle usage. And hopefully they tell their friends and neighbors that when they're convincing them to buy an EV as well. We found that with specifically our EV community and there's 2,700 people 
in this EV community that, that get the survey every year. And some of the, the questions are designed to understand that customer sat index. And last year, we had a customer sat index from those customers. Their overall impression of SRP was at a score of 71. When we survey our general populist customers, we get about a 60. Now, both of those are good. SRP's JD Power, I mean, we're well thought of, but a 10 point difference between these EV customers, and I think it's because we try to personalize as much as we can for them. We personalize them a rate plan. We personalize them, you know, the EV community. We have a web page that we have a portal just for EV community members where they can read research reports and graphs. Those that participate in our research studies, you know, get copies of the reports and things like that. So I think that they feel that we value them maybe more than, than the regular customer, that we, we're doing stuff just for them and it makes them feel special.